Number 86, consider the equilibrium, which they give you here, and I just rewrote it a little bit bigger. So we have 4NO2 gas plus 6H2O gas, which comes to equilibrium with 4NH3 gas plus 7O2 gas. And then for letter B, it says, how must the concentration of NH3 change to reach equilibrium if the reaction quotient is less than the equilibrium constant? Okay, so another kind of refresher question, right? We learned earlier in the chapter, and if you guys have been on the playlist, we've learned earlier in the playlist, you could always find those questions, that the reaction quotient is a Q value and the equilibrium constant is a K value. So basically, we just have to compare Q versus K. Now, a K value is just a standard constant value for a given equation that will tell you when a reaction is at equilibrium. A Q value could be any type of number. It could be at equilibrium, but it doesn't have to be. So in this case, they're telling us that the Q is less than the K. Now, there's a trick here in which to find out when this situation happens, what reaction is predominant. Is the forward reaction going to be predominant or the reverse? Now, when you do this, the trick is, is that the Q goes on the right-hand side and the K goes on the left. Now, if they're saying that the reaction quotient, the Q value, is less than the equilibrium constant, I would draw my comparison as the K value would be greater, right? If the Q is less than, that means that the K has to be greater than. And remember, the alligator teeth always chomps at the bigger number. That was actually a pre pretty good drawing of teeth. <laughs> anyway... But now here comes the trick. Treat this as an arrowhead and pull it back. And look, you made a direction, right? You pulled this back and here's the direction. Because of this, the general direction is going to be the forward direction. So if the general direction in which the reaction quotient is less than the K value, the, the equilibrium constant, we know that the reactants, all of the reactants, are going to decrease. So this whole side is going to drop and this whole side is going to increase. So that's what a forward reaction is. And maybe I'll just pull this a little bit away just so that we can look now at what's going on here. So it says, how much will the concentration of NH3 change? How must the concentration of NH3 change? They're basically asking for, is it going to decrease or is it going to increase? Well, here's the NH3. Since we're going in the forward direction, the concentration of NH3 has to increase. I'm just going to put the up arrow for increase. And that's how it has to change. So there has to be some gain in that concentration of NH3. Now, over here, I did write out all of the rules um, for what happens when the K and the Q are compared with each other. We're at this stage of the game. If the K is greater than the Q, you have more reactants. You need to drop them down. So if you have more reactants than you need, you need to get rid of them. That's why you shift this way. So this is the answer. How must the concentration of NH3 change? It just has to increase. We don't know by how much. All we know is that it has to increase. And that's it for part B. So hang tight. We got part C coming up. Um, thank you so much for viewing the video. I hope you guys are getting, uh, you know, good educational content. And let me know in the comments. Love talking to you guys. I'll see you in letter C. Bye-bye.